Hi, I am Brian Schweitzer and I live in Northwest Pennsylvania and I am a shed hunter. When I first started shed hunting, there was no information out there. There was no videos or anything. And actually, when I found my very first shed, it is, and this is no lie, this is the very first one I found. And I stumbled onto this while we were turkey hunting. And I kind of became intrigued with these things ever since then. And it was a new property I was actually hunting. And I lucked into a deer that really resembles this deer probably two or three years later. And I'm thinking this, could be his father, his grandfather, either one. That kind of started the whole ball rolling. And like I say, I have been self-taught about this because I had no, actually no one I knew shed hunted, or I, at least I didn't know anybody that did it, but there was no information out there about it. So it was kind of a trial and error thing and way more errors and trial and, and victories. And I think the first year I shed hunted, I ran 100 miles and I found two. And I thought, well, maybe I can't do this. I wasn't sure. So the second year, it was two or three, and there was never any big numbers at all. And I think the whole reason was because I was just running through the woods trying to find a shed. And I'm not sure when it came about where they started, people started talking about this more, and I was trying to figure out where I needed to go, what I needed to do. And it took quite a few years before I finally got the double digits on sheds. And now I'm, I usually luck into them, and I'm, I'm over double digits pretty easy anymore. That just came from a lot of walking around and doing the wrong thing and trying this and trying that. Because like I said, I I was doing this all on my own. I didn't even have any friends that did it actually, but now we got all kinds of buddies that do it. But back then, it was just kind of blundering around. And I have been pretty lucky. And this up here is the smaller ones and these are the little bit bigger ones. But actually, I think the smaller ones are more impressive to find than the big ones because, you know, just because you're finding something this big compared to this big. And this is my entire shed collection here. And actually, I really think they're all pretty cool. And like I said, this was my very, very first one. And I'm not exactly sure the year it was. And this one here is my biggest one, which, and actually this one, this is really cool too because this was found in the summertime and there is not one chew on this shed we were getting ready for a bow shoot one time and a friend and I were standing there taking a break because we were sweating. And I looked down and found this and I thought, oh my gosh, it doesn't even have a chew on it because that's, that's rare too. Then, these are all cool, these bigger ones, but sometimes I think these are the, the neatest ones and you gotta be up close and personal to find these. You gotta be more looking at your feet than you do out across the field because you don't notice these at 50 yards. Like you would see this one at 50 yards, but this one here, you better be, right on top of it. But I think those are just as cool. And I love watching all the shed shows, but people never show these ones, and I'm sure these are all over the place. These are out west here in Pennsylvania, but I still think nobody gives these any credit, so I think that's very cool. And if you notice, I don't know if anybody else does that, probably somebody, I write down where they are found, the date, what number of that year, and all these have the location, the number of that year, the date, and where they're all at. That way I always told my daughter whenever she has to get rid of all this stuff someday, she can look down and see where her dad was that day instead of being home. Okay, now enough about me. Now I wanna get into the hows and the where's to look for these things. And if one thing I can give any advice for is just don't get too burnt out on this when you go out and you don't find any, cause like I said, I blundered around for years and years and was finding one and two. And I was traveling a lot of distance and that's all I was finding. So the secret of this is to go slow and don't think you're gonna find 100 the first year you're gonna do this. It's just something you learn and you, after a while you learn where to look and what spot when you're walking through the woods, boy, I need to go up there and look at that. But just whatever you do, don't think 
you're gonna find a whole bunch right off the bat. And maybe you will, and I hope you do, but usually you don't. I wanna to get to the more technical part of this, and this is how I do it. And I try to make things in my life as simple as I can, so I try to think about shed hunting, and I have like, for instance, like back when I was, everybody was younger, not everybody, but a lot of people were younger, we had our Saturday night and our Sunday, and that's what a deer goes through between the rut and the time he drops his antlers. And back when we were having a good old time, we just run like crazy on Saturday and it come to Sunday and all we wanted to do was lay on the couch and go to the refrigerator, get a drink of water, back to the couch, go to the refrigerator and get a sandwich to eat. And I think that's what a deer does because he's got himself wore down from the rut and the hunting season and people chase him around. So I think a deer is gonna spend most of his time in his bed then he's gonna go to the food source or something to drink. And my opinion, doesn't have to be everybody's opinion, but I think he spends way more time in the bed than he does in a food source. So I concentrate most of my time in a food source and in the places in between, because that's where he spends most of his time. And I don't really don't think they travel a whole lot at that time of the year, because they're pretty wore down, just like we were when we were younger. And that's just kind of my analogy of the whole thing. Okay, when to start, and that varies from different people, and some people do it different than I do, but I, I'm usually like mid-March, end of March, and I, I use my trail cameras and listen to my buddy's trail camera pictures and see when they're losing their antlers. And the reason I do that, and I'm not saying this is how you should do it, but I don't backtrack very well. And I'll tell you a quick little story. One year I went into my one spot, so it was a crab apple patch, probably 100 yards by 100 yards, and I breezed through it, and there was lots of sign, but I didn't find a thing. So the next year came around and I went back into that same crabapple patch and I found three or four little small ones and they were covered with leaves and, and the light bulb went off in my head and I was there too early the year before and the deer came in after that and they lost their antlers. Like I say, I don't backtrack very well because for some reason every time I go to some place I've been to, I'm thinking, oh, I'm kind of wasting my time. But that's not a waste of time, but that's just the way I think about it. So I usually wait till mid-March, end of March, when everybody else's trail cameras are showing, they lost all their antlers. I just don't like being out there too early because I don't go back. And I, I probably should, but I just don't. The first place I start, and I usually do this every year, and I do it for a couple of different reasons. I go to fields first. I go to a like a, a field where they're feeding for a couple of reasons, like the grass is packed down from the snow. And, and there's another reason. I've heard stories where guys are in their four wheelers riding through and oh, they seen a shed laying there and nothing against them, but I'm trying to beat them to that situation. The guys in the pickup truck, the farmers, and a goldenrod field, deer love to walk through a goldenrod field, and at that time of year, you can see where they walk through, plus you can kind of look off to the side 30, 40 yards, and you can, because like I say, the snow's got the goldenrod packed down. That's just one of the reasons, or a couple of the reasons why I go to a, the fields and the goldenrod fields. All right, now I am in the bedding, and uh, that's one of the cooler spots to do it, because Usually when you go into the bedding, there's either side shelter or a pine tree. And I found more sheds under a pine tree than any place else. Cause it seems like they like laying with something over their head and they're just out of the weather. And another thing I don't like to do is try to take too big of a piece if I'm in a hurry. Like sometimes I only have two hours to take a shed, take a shed hunt. So I'll section places off and I'll just do this corner that way. I'm not ever, oh, I'm in a hurry. I'm gonna skip this spot. But under a pine tree, against a log pile, anything where there's, and you can usually tell by the, the deer sign if you're in the right spot, because the deer sign tells everything. Wherever a deer's standing up, laying down, standing up, laying up, because I think the shed thing is more time spent than anything, wherever they spend most of their time, and that's usually in the bedding, and they lay around under a pine tree, and I found numerous sheds, small, a little bit bigger, and they're both laying right side by side. That just tells me that they, laid there and laid there and laid there and laid there, or else they laid there and come back and laid there. So bedding is definitely the best spot for me. And under a pine tree, you can't hardly beat it. That's how I do it. And that's usually it's the same every year. I start the same way. I do the fields first and I usually don't go too early. I watch my trail cameras. I do the goldenrod fields and I save the bedding for last. And that's always the jackpot usually for me. And if it's a big bedding, I won't go too early. And the things I've told you, Obviously, I've lucked into my share. I'm not saying I'm the greatest in the world, but this is what I got. And probably the biggest thing you can do is slow down and put the boots on the ground, and I hope you enjoy yourself out in the woods. <laughs>